Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your stock mentor, Brian Johnson. Um, we had, I was, I usually do a video during the course of the week, and I really, to be honest, I decided not to do one until we actually got some movement in the market. I figured it would come Thursday after we got the preliminary job numbers or the FOMC remarks, and really nothing happened there. I thought, well, we'll do one Friday after the job numbers come out. And so we still didn't really get much action. So let me just recap what happened this last week. And let's talk about um, uh, maybe things to at least process going forward within the market itself. Think about this. And we didn't see much movement during the course of the week. Not a big surprise. Job numbers were coming out on Friday. FOMC was making an announcement Thursday. So not uncommon lately anyway for the market to do absolutely nothing leading up into these big events. Here's what we saw after those two big events, and it literally boiled down to this. Not much. So the FOMC basically came out and said everybody was on board with QE3, and they think they can manage the risk. Okay, well, that's fine. And more importantly, the job numbers came out. Now, I was up for the job numbers, and I saw the big spike in the market at the time. And we even started that first half hour of the trading day showed a, a strong move to the upside. But what happened after that? It fell right back again. By the end of the day, we were flat to down on the NASDAQ, per se, <clears throat> in the markets themselves. So we went from 8.1% um, unemployment to 7.8%. Would you not think that would be not only good news, but excellent news for the market? I mean, it wasn't like 0.1%. 8.1 to 8 is one thing, but that was a huge move. And very, very muted reaction from the markets. Um, just nothing. We get the, the, the sharp move up to begin the day, and then a bleed down, back to really break even for the most part, by the end of it. So are the markets getting tired up here? Are the bears ready to come in and do a little bit more damage here before things maybe kick off again for the bulls? <clears throat> I kind of thought we'd see a little bit more strength coming into a uh, election, and it certainly seems like that would still be a, a good possibility. I mean, we've had... I mean, we're not going down. How about that? How about if we just look at it from that side? So let's recap and see where we've been. You can see over the last week or so, we've been nowhere. Once we've uh, got caught between this 13,350 range and 13,650 range on the Dow, we've been nowhere since. Up a little bit, down a little bit, and right back up towards the top. So we are pushing the highs. We're looking to see if we can break those coming into the new week. I'll try to get my video out on the same time Tuesday. See if we can do a Tuesday video. Hopefully we'll get some movement and there will be something to talk about. But uh, we're looking to see if we can't break above those highs. Now, that's going to be your first opportunity to get back into the market to the bull side if you really want to be conservative. If you want to be a little bit more conservative on a bear trade to the downside, I wouldn't get trigger happy here. I'd wait for it to get back down below this level before you start looking at anything to the bear side. This consolidation has been a very well-controlled, contained uh, move. 300 points. That's it. That's all we're looking at right here. And most of it actually could be contained probably between the 5 and 650 mark, to be quite honest. So <clears throat> we have these two lines showing us the extremes with the middle line running through the center. And this is what we've seen in the past numerous times, if you followed the videos. And we're waiting for breaks of these particular areas. If we look at the daily, you can see the Dow doing the same thing. All I've done is, is put in the two ex extreme lines. This is still, for all intents and purposes, a high base formation. This is still, for all intents and purposes, a bullish instead of bearish. So wait for your breaks. Wait for your breaks and take them. Now, the Dow, unlike some of the other indices, held the 20-day beautifully. Look at the number of times we tried to push below it, and the bulls brought it right back up and held on to it. This will become crucial as we push forward, this 20-day moving average. This is a big dog here for the Dow. So if you're a Dow watcher, if you're a diamonds trader, that type of thing, you're looking for breaks above here and breaks back down below here. On the NASDAQ, this was weaker. Look, it was down over half a percent. A lot of that's coming on the back of Apple. By the way, if you'd like to trade Apple, sign up for the newsletter, 28 bucks a month. I follow Apple every day in the uh, newsletter, and it has given us some great, great plays. I mean, we're getting moves of 5 to 10 bucks um, within during the course of a week. We'll probably get, lately, because Apple's been moving so nicely, two to three of those moves. And if you're only playing 5 or 10 shares, I mean, it's it's not hasn't been 
um, extremely difficult to pull 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks out of Apple on just a small trade like that. You got to, you guys got to keep in mind that yes, Apple's a $600 stock, but that doesn't mean you have to play 100 shares or 1,000 shares or 500 shares of it to to make money at it. You you only need to pay, play about five to 10 shares, and you can do just fine. Five shares, just five shares on Apple, and a $10 move is 50 bucks. That is not too bad. That is not too shabby. So keep that in mind. It's all relative. Okay, you don't have to play Apple in, with a ton of um, shares in order to make money with it and it's been moving and it's been moving nicely and a lot better than what the market's been moving but it has also in its drop been falling very quickly and that's been great as well to play it short if you guys like to short things Apple's been a good one lately to do it's a little bit on the spooky side because Apple has a tendency to turn turn fast and really burn to the upside but lately it's played very nicely to the downside pushing that 650 mark actually right now and that is also bringing down the Nasdaq so you can see it didn't hang on to anything look we got the gap up on Friday yay job numbers oh boo who cares it, it dropped right back down the markets are just they don't care it, it's as though they know the numbers were baked or they think the numbers were baked or it was all or the price of the market was already they already knew that the job numbers were going to be much better as we push and so they've they've already run those numbers or uh They've already put the value into the market itself, but as it is, we ran down on Friday. So we're stuck in a range of our own here, 2770 and 2850. Those are your areas. If you're a NASDAQ player, that's absolutely what you're looking for. We held below the 20, below it, below it, below it, below it, just got above it on Thursday, only to crash right back down below it on Friday. Now, if you're a chart pattern player or a, chart, a candlestick player, you'll notice this is a bearish engulfing pattern. I wouldn't get too excited about it right now, but there is, and I would be looking for, opportunity to play this thing back down. I want you to bring... Uh, I want you to notice this, all right? It's uh, it's it's almost too obvious. So I'm a little bit uh, about the whole thing, but it is what it is. Look at the head and shoulders forming on the NASDAQ. How clear is that? Here's your left shoulder. Here's your head. Here's your right shoulder. That 2770 mark, which is right down and right, right around the 50-day moving average, will mark your neckline. That's what you're looking for. That's definitely, um, uh, a could, a could definitely be a big uh-oh moment for the uh, bulls if it'll slip back below that. So there's your mark to watch on the NASDAQ as we enter the new week. And from a weekly perspective, you can see us sitting here, sitting here, sitting here, right around that 2800 mark. So the 2770 would be firmly below that and looking for closes back down in that area to really confirm that move. But it would certainly make sense. Um, if we saw a little deeper drop, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. We are certainly at a spot where I am not mega bullish and I am not mega bearish right here. I'm very neutral. I'm just sitting around waiting. Here's your range on the SPX. Look, 1470 and 1430-ish. These are your marks. You're waiting for those to break before you take your trades. Be watching those very carefully. As you can see, here was the move up into overhead on Friday and the drop right back down. Sitting nicely on the 20 here on the 60-minute chart. From a daily perspective, this is your bigger dog. Look, hit, 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 and hold, hit and hold, hit and escape, and then come back to hit and hold and hit and hold again. Now, we tried to slice through it on Friday, but this line here is a monster. It's great. So if we can get back above this blue line and close back above this blue line, we'll yay for the bulls. They could be on their way here. 1470, 75-ish area is what you're looking for on the SPX, but I'm telling you that eventually this blue line is going to win. It is going to win. So it has held so nicely here in the past. And with this one throw over, not uncommon to see that happen, but a retest of it and a hold of it, mm, I'm telling you, you guys got to be careful with your trading. Don't get too bullish. Don't get too bearish. Or you've got to be neutral. Wait for the breaks. Wait for it to break the levels before you make your moves. Otherwise, you get committed to one thing, and if you're wrong, you're going to get destroyed. You're going to get torn up, so be, just wait for the breaks. Here's your VIX. I like to talk about the VIX. Between 15 and 20 is complacency. We're well below that. Now, look, we're still dancing around these 13 numbers, and I'm just stunned by this, literally stunned. We haven't seen this since 2007, where we've been down in this area for any kind of length of time. We just typically don't spend a lot of time down here. So this is really, really good opportunities for you VIX players to to uh, to maybe pick up some VIX longs. But keep in mind, this also shows very cleanly a complacency in the market. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, basically weeks of the last umpteen months. We've been stuck down here in not only the lower range, but the extreme lower range of this VIX. There's just a lot of complacency in the market. There doesn't seem to be a lot of fear pouring in. 
uh, it'll take a major drop in the market to really get this thing to move. But when it does, I would not be surprised to see the VIX move 10 to 20% in one day. When it moves, it'll go, and it'll go hard. So, and that'll usually more than likely be accompanied by a lot of a um, a lot of selling pressure too from the markets. It'll be a big down day that day. Uh, FAS, these are new moves. I want to show you something here from a technical analysis standpoint. Look, as we drop down here, we break this blue line that's rising. Okay, come down here. We break this blue line here that's falling. Look what it did. Once it broke it, came back to test, 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 before blasting its way back up. Very common then to come back and retest some previous lines as well. That would be the rising blue line. We almost got there, but close enough. I would say you're looking for pushes up above here to go long, pushes back below here to go short on the FAS, keeping in mind this is your financial bull. Taking a look at it from a daily, and you can see that same type of patterns. I don't have the lines drawn in, but you can see it based on the 60 for the daily. Back down below this area, you're looking for the 20-day moving average. This is going to be a very big level to hold for the bulls and to take for the bears. This is what you're looking for. We get any kind of a breakdown below here, and yes, it's a little bit ugly, but potentially a small left shoulder ahead and a big right shoulder. It's ugly, but potential for that kind of a pattern to be working on right here. The, of course, the uh, uh, the confirmation would be back below about 102.50, but something you need to be watching, especially if it's a financial, something bad comes out of Europe, and these things fall, and they fall quickly. So back above this area here for your long, back below here for your short, watching carefully that 20-day moving average. The FAZ then, from the opposite end, depending on which one you like to play, kind of has that same feeling here. You want to get this thing back up in here, really. To be conservative, you want to get back up in here before you take a long, but drops back below 16, and could be still a little bit more bombs away. Now we have moved from a channel to a falling wedge, and that falling wedge is bullish in pattern forms. Okay, So we are looking at a bullish pattern down here. We still need breaks back up above here to really confirm it. If we drop back below 16, there's plenty of room. There's still lots of room. Look, this blue line is down now right around the 15 mark. There's still plenty of room for the FAZ to drop. So I see bullish patterns. I see bearish patterns. I am completely neutral in here, and you should be too. Don't you dare get yourself stuck in a trade that, you, that you're that you going to get buried in. Don't get so prideful that you absolutely feel you know which way the market's going. Now, if you are get if you get mega bullish and it goes and it goes up, well, then you know you're going to feel like a champ and more power to you. But I'm telling you, that's not that's not the uh, that's not the way to trade. You want to be careful. Wait for those breaks and then take those moves when you get them. That does it for today's video, guys. I'll be back with you sometime this next week. But I want to make sure I got something out to you this week. I was kind of hoping we'd see a little bit more movement, and we just didn't. We just didn't. Uh, I'll tell you, I think it was more telling that we didn't go anywhere than. That, than if we had gone someplace for the week. The fact that job numbers were as good as they were and the market went nowhere really kind of speaks volumes. The market is still a little bit, oh, I don't know about that. So we'll see if they maybe decide to change their minds on Monday, look at the numbers and go, no, they're legit, we're good. And maybe they do continue to carry this up. But until that happens, you need to be very cautious with this right now. Okay, sign up for the newsletter. Twenty-eight bucks a month. That's a buck a day. It's less than a cup of coffee. You guys need to uh, to add this arsenal to your trading. I I do those videos every single day except for Saturday. So you get my take on everything as the days progress. Plus uh, stock picks during the course of a week, entries, exits, targets, Elliott wave, oil, gold. Uh, we talk about the Russells. I, there's just so much more content in those subscriber videos. I highly uh, recommend you give it a shot. Try it out for months, see what you think. And then, of course, the next step is the mentoring. That is the full-fledged educational course that I offer here that uh, can get you up and running on your own, doing your own thing. A lot of people I know are interested in doing that. And as we come into the fall hours here, a lot of people will be uh, we'll have a lot of extra time to commit to something like that. So if I can help you out with that, please send me an email. I'll send you some information on it. We'll find out if it's a fit and go from there. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.